Ah, okay, making a video. Yeah, it's not walking, I don't feel like talking. Sort of it makes the walking better for me, so it's sort of a selfish indulgence, I suppose. Um, and, uh, you know, but I usually like to have some kind of subject that's, you know, or I don't want to play the video. Because um, I sort of want to play Hothla Day's video. <laughs> but I'm going to respond to it because it's the only thing in town at the moment. Um, uh, I can't make much sense out of the, you know, the Holocaust interaction between um, Antikontavad and Logic Rolls the Dice. I just don't really get the... I, you know, maybe there's a point, we'll hear the punchline. Um, because he basically says the Holocaust, it doesn't matter whether he says it exists or doesn't exist. The point is, he believes it's over, and therefore, it doesn't matter that it happened. Um, you know, that's his philosophy. <laughs> yeah, so failure doesn't matter. Uh, any price you pay for anything doesn't matter, as long as you're dead and forgotten. Uh, but anyway, um... Yeah, so we're still in this, the economics thing, so it's related to the Antikontifad's ability to extract a price, as long as the price is in the past, from a recognition in terms of... <laughs> that was interesting. Uh, I'm a little wobbly still. Anyway, um, not as foot articulate as I'd like to be. Let's see if I can be philosophically articulate. So anyway, the word fairness is a word to play with a little bit. Um, well, in some sense, fairness in the absolute sense wouldn't really make any difference. I mean, all you're really talking about is, you know, uh, the buckets of horror versus the buckets of ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, fun. Um, <laughs> God damn, I almost fell down again. This is going to be interesting. I guess I shouldn't walk with my hand in my pocket, but I do sort of enjoy it. Uh, anyway, all right, no more playing. Um, yeah, it's a habit of mine. Keep my hands busy. Uh, works for me, anyway. Uh, so where was I? Yeah, so I'll just put my hand back in my pocket. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, that's very nice. Um, more um, yeah, so this fairness thing does come down to, you know, just a simple equation, um, in the end. You know, you just, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who does the suffering, it doesn't matter who does the funding, it just matters how much suffering and funding there was. So in that sense, fairness doesn't matter. But in every other sense, of course, it does. In the sense of we're, um, more likely, we're, we're conditionable and incentivizable and so therefore fairness would be fundamentally important when um, fairness will have something to do with outcomes in the future. Uh, if you play the sport and deserve had nothing to do with it, uh, you know, it was just arbitrary who won. <laughs> you know, it didn't matter that you were the strongest and the fastest and the best. Then nobody would do much work to be the best. They said, no, it's not going to matter. Uh, the gold medal is going to go to whoever it goes to. So, in that sense, you need incentives, uh, and fairness will provide, deserve, will provide incentives rationalized, coherent to the value um, you wish to promote, or you understand to be important. So, uh, in the realm of suffering, yeah, those who take the risk, you know, those who go bungee jumping, <laughs> you know, the, you know, the accidents of bungee jump, jumping shouldn't happen to bystanders, you know what I mean? Somebody just walking down the street shouldn't have a bungee jumper fall on them, because they didn't assign the risk, um, and so they shouldn't be obliged to pay the penalty for the risk taking. So, you know, it's sort of easy to understand that... This is just fundamental uh, in the terms of its the nature of a system uh, that has give and take, that has uh, uh, a value in it. The distribution of value um, may well be very important 
to the uh, distribution or the creation of um, future results. Uh, reward people for doing the right thing, you'll get more right stuff. Uh, you know, punish them for the wrong thing, you get less wrong stuff. That kind of idea. So that's where um, fairness has something to do with it. Um, now, whether life should be fair as a game, again, I don't think it's that complicated. Um, so I guess the argument is more about people not liking the metaphor of evolution and life and the adventure of being matter in the universe. They don't like the idea of comparing this adventure to a game or to an experiment or to something that you could judge the efficacy of it, the efficiency of it, the function of it. And um, so clearly you have these two arguments. You have the absolute argument that whatever you call it, um, it's creating these bad happenings and uh, it's perpetuated because these good happenings are happening to people inclined to create more of it because they're satisfied that it was functional enough. So they'll make more. Um, but this, again, can just be argued as just a psychological uh, phenomenon. But regardless, let's just, for the, for the sake of the argument, uh, let's concede. Um, you know, there, there's that first question is, what's the absolute nature of it? And then the second ethical question is, uh, even if it was running a profit and you distributed the suffering inequitably, that means the people who took the risk didn't pay for the risk. Uh, the bystanders were the victims. So, um, you know, randomly. Uh, and that, uh, you know, they had no right to abdicate their victimhood. They had no right to escape your use of them as fodder, as a, as a bridge, as a jacket in a mud puddle, um, using them to get to your future. You know, the future being the future of your progeny. And so those are the two questions. The first question is in absolute sense, does life run a profit? The second question is, if it does run a profit, uh, is it doing it equitably? Is the profit on something other than rape and slavery? Clearly, slavery is profitable for those who own the slaves. Uh, but is it ethically decent enough to justify the profitability? I think many people would concede uh, that regardless of the profitability, regardless that you get to the future faster, uh, <laughs> you know, more efficiently, um, in terms of your people, your kind, uh, clearly the victims pay an extraordinary price and they do so without consent, uh, forcibly. Um, so yeah, they're... I don't, I can't, I guess I, you know, I've, I've attempted to diagram these two equations and I've attempted to explain in as plain a language as possible uh, why I think uh, it can be demonstrated that life fails on both equations. And all it has to do is fail on one of them, uh, you know, to be... Uh, insufficient, <laughs> you know, to be declared unacceptable. Uh, you have to fix it or you have to not do it. Um, it's like a fa faulty nuclear power plant design. You know, so let's say we had a design of a plant and it has now, let's say it's killed 500,000 people. Uh, clearly, you couldn't justify building more plants until you um, fixed it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I've I've set this out pretty plain, pretty plain language. Uh, that when you add it up, um, 
it just doesn't meet the standard. It's clearly, I think the easier argument to understand is the deserve argument. It doesn't apply the torture to the people playing the game. I'm not a pro grader, I'm not a risk taker, and yet I'm obliged uh, to pay the price for the, the world that exists. I mean, I certainly didn't start the fire, to quote a Billy Joel <laughs> song, um, and yet I am expected to uh, passively and without griping get burned in it. Uh, why? <laughs> that doesn't sound, that's, uh, clearly that seems like I'm just being used. People like me, people who find life a stench rather than a pleasure, uh, you know, overall, uh, you know, and, and absolutely humiliating in a way. I mean, it's humiliating, <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, it's humiliating, it's in a charmingly funny way, but I just mean, it's humiliating. I mean, I can, I can tell you all the ways it's humiliating, but I mean, they're, they all pretty much start with the peen. <laughs> yeah, they all start with something like peen. Yeah. And it disowns you. Um, and you're just following it around. Like a, <laughs> yeah, well, like a thing that follows stuff around. Uh, like a slave to it. Um, and there isn't much else here. The rest of it's just work to make the penis comfortable. You know, uh, maintenance. Maintenance of your existence uh, to keep your penis warm and comfortable. Uh, not much else happening here. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so it's, it's humiliating. It's degrading. And... Uh, at the worst of times, it's just absolutely torturous to exist. Torturous. So, when that's imposed without consent, you have an imperfection in the design. You have a fundamental and catastrophic flaw. And again, the metaphor of a game is fair. It's a fair metaphor. Uh, and if you had a game, and you, again, distributed the punishments, the rewards, uh, you know, not to, not, in, not consistent with the behavior of the individuals, the players. Uh, plenty of people, I think, most people, if I was to do that to football or baseball, uh, if I was to make deserve have nothing to do with it, I think they would notice it and they would find the game uh, aggravating and unacceptable. Um, yeah. Um, chipmunk. <laughs> so, uh, so, so that's why fairness is important, I suppose. I don't know how else to, uh, you know, you can't, I can't explain it any simpler than there's a dynamic of systems and concepts like efficiency and productivity are relevant, meaningful concepts. And in the function of life, the productivity is to get as much of this comfort crap as you can glean out of the least torture uh, imposed. And um, fairness would be part of uh, uh, a recognition of that standard and a recognition that the standard will affect the imp imposition of a standard, uh, the getting what you deserve, uh, will um, encourage responsible, thoughtful behavior. If the risk is yours, if it's your carcass, um, <laughs> you know, on the counter, on the chopping block, uh, yeah, maybe you're going to be a little more uh, careful about what you accidentally let happen. You know, when the knives are dangling over you. Uh, yeah. You know, it's a little more real then. You know, when they're dangling over somebody else. And I suppose the 
fundamental to this conversation is a, a recognition that most people just will not, have not, let's just say they have not been obliged to recognize uh, that we're playing this game in an atmosphere uh, where you just, you aren't an individual. See, I was like they kept saying that. He keeps, he keeps saying he has rights. He keeps talking like his rights, his rights, his rights. And there's absolutely no acknowledgement that he doesn't live on an island. What he may want or what he may desire uh, may be compromising somebody else's welfare. And that is, I mean, it's a, a four-year-old uh, might be able to be foolish enough to think that kind of gross selfishness works, but any kind of mature person recognizes they just can't take what they want. Uh, and they certainly can't um, ignore the fact that other people have to walk this ground, other people have to breathe this air, other people uh, are attempting to achieve their satisfaction and comfort and you can't compromise uh, their welfare to uh, you know get what you want uh, exercise your right <laughs> you know this doesn't work that way nope 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 <sighs> anyway <sighs> oh, video feeling a bit queer today Oh, yeah, not that way. Well, I probably feel a little queer that way, too. <laughs> yeah, I, I just... <sighs> yeah, weird. But every day is weird. Every single day is weird, weird, weird. It's weird all the way down. Okay, anyway, until next time. Ah, a little bit of an add-on. <laughs> yeah, I've gotten a little creepier as the day went on. Anyway, um, uh oh, punchy leaves. Uh, I guess I could stand still for a minute, sit down maybe. I'll wait till I find a good seat. Uh, so also they had mentioned in his video, that such part, that he's personally an anti natalist Which, you know, sort of doesn't mean much to me. It's like saying, I personally am not a rapist. But it's okay if you want to rape. Uh, I'm personally something, but it's okay if you do it. And you'd only say that, uh, you know, when you're unsure, when you when you lack confidence in a value, you know, then you'll say something like, "Yeah, well, I'm personally against it." I mean, if you're just saying that you personally wouldn't choose to have children if you had over to do over again or something, or you wouldn't have any more children or something like that. It's not, that's not really anti-natalism. <laughs> you know, it's, that's anti-fatherhood for you personally. So it's really not the same subject if you're not really talking about the very idea of replicating. So it's like any other moral issue. It's, no point in saying or ethical issues. So yeah, I fall into the, the every once in a while the moralist uh, screw with my brain, and that word comes out of my mouth. So it's like any other ethical or value issue uh, in terms of a, a political stand. Uh, you know, being for or against torture, being for or against all kinds of different activities. Um, I just don't see any reason if I'm against the activity, if I think it's negative, uh, why would I say go ahead and do it? It's like saying, I personally don't choose to be a Nazi, but it's okay if those guys are Nazis. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I don't personally choose to own slaves, but it's okay if you do it. Uh, it's very hard to understand uh, a statement like that unless, like I said, you have no confidence at all that the value you're exercising. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't deny myself the liberty of eating meat, 
um, because I think I have a choice. Because I think it's reasonable to choose otherwise. So why would I think somebody else uh, has the right? <laughs> I, I just don't, it wouldn't make any sense. I, I'm only not eating meat because I think it's uh, an obscenity as, a, as an action. Uh, and that at minimum, uh, it doesn't make the situation better. Hard to say, you know, in terms of the volume of blood and guts on earth, you know, whether it's going to make any difference, but uh, it really doesn't matter as a difference. It just matters as a, you can't do that. I mean, the fact that some woman's going to die of cancer, you know, it doesn't really, and it, that you might be saving her some trouble if you rape and kill her instead, <laughs> you know, uh, that doesn't mean it's, it's okay. Uh, you know, because you've, compared to what would have happened, you've improved the circumstance because you haven't improved it for good cause or good reason. And there's every likelihood if that reasoning was applied to all circumstances that there would be an inverse circumstance in terms of the amount of harm done. Uh, so anyway, it really just comes down to confidence. So if you think there's a, a reasonable chance that somebody can come up with some reasoning to explain why they have a right to subject uh, the non-consenting to the risk of existence uh, that you don't think is a compelling reason for yourself, uh, you know, then just say, because you are you have no confidence in your understanding, uh, and that there's a, you know, an argument that exists that you find interesting or compelling as a potential counter-truth. Uh, but I'll say from my perspective, I see no argument that is the least bit rational, reasonable, logical, cogent, coherent, sensible, uh, that can either justify the violation of the necessity of consent or the practical fact uh, that life, for most people, is just uh, an addictive syndrome and they will not be better for it. Uh, they will pointlessly chase, pointlessly endure significant uh, sadness and unpleasantness and die and be rolled into the forgotten legacy of little squeaky mammal on earth. And there will be no profit for the adventure. And I'm quite confident but that's the truth of our existence. That you can only fix what the nature of existence breaks. Uh, there's, no, there's no money to be made. There's only cutting your losses. Cutting the losses, more precisely. So, anyway. Oh, I didn't sit down. Oh, I can sit here. Yeah. Uh, oh, dear. <sighs> yeah, I gotta... <laughs> I gotta feel a bit better than this. <sighs> Getting on with my life in a go, go, go kind of manner. I need to get highly productive and highly efficient. Can't do that in this condition. <laughs> yeah, the condition of. I'm sick of this. Anyway. Positive mental attitude. I am Vigo. <laughs> yeah, whatever. such and so forth. Hey, there's the cat.
Jeez, you've been outside all day. You're probably all full of bugginess, right? Your brain is all foot cuddled, huh? Huh? Are you? I bet you are. Right there. Okay. Wants his whatever. Whatever's between dinner and lunch. Wants that. Alright then. So. Yeah. Yeah, you'll go in and then come right back out again. So it's feeding time at the zoo. Oh, there's the. the I, call, I call him Mellow. Mellow. Hey, Mellow. 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 Look at all that fur. Meow. Meow. You are awfully cute. He's kind of. He's a little buggy. You have to worry about getting Cusco swatted, and this guy doesn't like him. Come on. So, why do you have to be an asshole? Jeez. Stop it. Stop it. Yeah, he's looking like he's going to do something stupid. Anyway, politics everywhere. Yes, come inside. You forgot. That's right. Leave the cat alone. Yeah, yeah, but it's just, a, you know, it's like one of them Angora kind of cats. What's it doing out in the, you know, it's, humans suck. Okay. Mm, I don't have no mommy and no life. And, anyway, it's just it's terribly sad. Okay, until next time.